Alright guys, even here in this video I'm gonna make a list of top 5 most intense training bodybuilders in the world. Honestly, how many times it happened to you that you saw a bodybuilder on the stage and you really liked the physique, but when you checked their social media and you saw how they train, you got kind of disappointed, right? I mean, in bodybuilding it doesn't really matter how you train, all that matters is what kind of physique do you present on the stage. If high volume, low intensity works for a bodybuilder, they will keep doing it because they don't want to risk their health, they don't want to risk an injury and stuff like that, so it's okay to do it that way, but it's not very exciting for us fans to watch it. Not only that you're gonna stop watching videos of them train, but you will also find their persona a bit less attractive. And of course, the opposite happens with bodybuilders who train with high intensity, you start to like them more. And so let's start this list with the place number 5, and this place will be taken by Arnold Schwarzenegger. To be completely honest, I was absolutely certain about top 4 places, but I wasn't really sure about the 5th place, and then when I thought about it, I was like, well, Arnold is training pretty intensely, so let's take him. I was considering other guys for this 5th place, I was thinking about Kevin Leveroni, maybe even Jay Cutler, Big Ramy too, but I still find Arnold a bit more intense than them. There are other guys like Johnny Jackson and many bodybuilders that are not top Olympia bodybuilders. I will use only top 3 Olympia finishers in this list. So I'm sorry Johnny Jackson, even though he still is probably one of the most intense training bodybuilders, he will not be on this list. I also have to make an honorable mention of Dallas McCarver because he definitely was one of the most intense training bodybuilders in the world. So let's go back to Arnold, and I don't think that Arnold trained super super intensely, because his volume was very very high. He was actually doing every body part three times a week, I mean he didn't do too many exercises, but the intensity was really there, because he always preached going to failure, to failure, to failure, I heard him saying that so many times, and indeed he was very very intense trainer, but his volume was also pretty high, he didn't go low volume. But when you watch him train, you can see the intensity in his face, basically. He's always so focused and he always gives 100% to every single set. On the other hand, he was also pretty damn strong. He competed as a powerlifter and benched 500 pounds. He squatted 540 pounds, which is not too much of a difference compared to bench press, but you know, his legs are always his weakness and his chest was his strength. He deadlifted 710 pounds, which is only 90 pounds shy from Ronnie Coleman's record. And compare these two physiques, compare the muscularity of them, you don't get this strong by accident. You get this strong by training very very intensely. And while we are talking about Ronnie Coleman, he will make place number 4 on this list. And you are wondering what kind of list is this if Ronnie Coleman is only 4th? Well, I will explain the reasons why I don't find him more intense than these other top 3 bodybuilders. Yeah, he did squat 800 pounds. Yeah, he did deadlift 800 pounds. Sure, he bench pressed 5 plates. Yeah, he leg pressed 1 ton of weight. Sure, he T-barred rode who knows how much weight on that bar, but that all kind of seemed light for him. I mean, he did say lightweight baby or ain't nothing but a peanut, right? <laughs> all jokes aside, he was definitely one of the most intense training bodybuilders in the world. His intensity was through the roof and his strength as well, and it showed on his physique. He was very, very hard and grainy. Although he wasn't as grainy as the top two bodybuilders on this list, but we'll talk about that a bit later. The thing that actually makes intensity is not simply the weight that you are lifting, that's just heavy lifting. Intensity is actually going to failure, going to your limits and even beyond if possible. I mean, when Ronnie squatted 800 pounds, it was very hard for him, it was a big intensity. He was getting ready for it for some time, he prepared mentally for it, he was really really focused and it was very crazy, Very, I can't even imagine how does it feel to have 800 pounds on your back, but it seemed like he could have done a couple of more reps. And also he said once in his interview, people asked him does he have any regrets and he said the only regret that he has is not squatting four times that day instead of two. And also doing two reps or one rep or five reps even is not very hard, not very intense mentally. It is hard, definitely, on your body. 
but you don't feel so much pain in it necessarily. You do feel a lot of exhaustion and it really hits your center nervous system and all your joints as well, but it's not that mentally demanding. But Ronnie was an absolute beast. I mean, all of his workouts were crazy, with crazy weights, with crazy intensity, and top four in the world is really, really huge. But let's go to top three now, and the third spot will be taken by Tom Platz. Yeah, Ronnie Coleman was an eight-time Mr. Olympia champion and probably the greatest bodybuilder of all time, and he was able to press 200-pound dumbbells on the incline bench press for reps with good form. But he didn't really do those murder sets of 30 reps to failure on squat with heavy weights. And while he was leg curling, he didn't move the machine 5 feet from the place where it was originally when he started the set like Tom Plutz did. Tom Plutz is basically the godfather of intensity. I mean, the way he performed his leg days is really something to be respected, to be admired, and it also triggered a lot of bodybuilders and made them chase their passion the way Tom Plutz did. He was very, very passionate about bodybuilding, and you can hear him talk about it, and you can see him train with all that passion, not only his leg days, but pretty much all of his workouts. His form wasn't textbook perfect by any means, and his squat looked horrible, I mean, it was just, he was dropping down on his knees, he didn't care about the form at all, but he naturally had very, very strong knee joints, and he never really got injured, thankfully. The reason why he is not higher on this list is because you cannot train with heavyweights and high reps at the same time. He said that he trained with heavyweights and high reps, but that doesn't really make sense, does it? I mean, 500 pounds on squat is definitely very heavy, for sure. If you can do 30 reps, you can probably do more weight for 5 reps, right? So, obviously the weight wasn't heavy for him. But then again, going to failure on 20 or 30 reps on squat and doing so many sets like that and pushing yourself so, so hard with so much weight is really something to be admired and uh, it's a very slim difference between the top 3 spots, but I gave the third one to Tom Plutz. He had an idea that when he walks on the stage, judges don't look at their papers and use their pencils to write down the scores, but to literally drop their pens and papers and to look at him and to say, what the f*** is that? He partially achieved this with his lower body, not so much with his upper body, but somebody who did do this and had this idea in mind as well was Dorian Yates. He takes second place on this list and the reason is his heavy duty or how he liked to call it blood and guts training system. He adopted this principle from Mike Manser and Mike Manser adopted it from Arthur Jones and it basically is all about low volume and high intensity. So if you have only one set per exercise to do, you will give 100% and even more than that if it is possible. The reason why Dorian is higher on this list than Tom Plutz is because he did 6 to 8 rep range and when he did legs he would do 10 to 12. And that meant that he would use only very, very heavy weight for him. And that was generally very, very heavy weight. And he would always go to failure, that's the thing, and beyond failure. He always had a training partner who would help him go beyond failure. So if he would be able to do 8 reps on his own, a training partner would help him do... 12 or 11. So basically it would be only one set, which meant that he would give all of his body into it. And it would be low rep range, so he would use very very heavy weight for him, and for that reason I find that more intense than doing 30 reps. Not only that he used some very very heavy weight, and not only that he went beyond failure, he also had textbook perfect form. He always focused very much on the negative part of the motion, on the static part, on the positive as well. So it was perfect form, textbook perfect form with super focus and intensity, heavyweights. It was just crazy. It's just, just so crazy. I mean, people still today watch his Blood and Guts video when they go to the gym to get motivated. I do it. I do it almost every day. And uh, I'm a huge fan of Dorian. He's my favorite bodybuilder in the world, as you guys may know already. 
but yeah, he's second place, not the first place, and the first place will be taken by Branch Warren. The reason why I give Branch Warren number one spot on this list is because he risked his life in pretty much all of his working sets. He always used heavyweights and he was very very strong and he always went to failure and beyond. But watching him train was very very scary because it looked like he would injure himself any second. What is interesting is that he actually didn't hurt himself in the gym too many times. I mean, he did have a couple of injuries, but they all happened outside of the gym. Aside from living very dangerous bodybuilding lifestyle, he was also a hunter and still is today. You can see him falling from that horse in the Generation Iron movie and so on. I mean, he lived a very dangerous lifestyle over in Texas. So it wasn't a problem for him to risk a lot when training and he felt that that kind of training really worked for him and it did to an extent so i mean he did have injuries from training and they stopped him from being a competitive bodybuilder after a certain age but until that point he did achieve great results he was a runner-up at the 2009 mr olympia he won arnold classic and also another thing he had an amazing conditioning I mean, before Dorian Yates, nobody used the term grainy. Everybody used terms like ripped, shredded, peeled, that kind of stuff. But the word, the term grainy came up only after Dorian. And that meant having a physique that is so low in body fat and also has that hard muscle that you create from only heavy, heavy weights. And Dorian did that and Branch did it as well. But Branch had even more muscularity and more vascularity so for that reason branch looked even more freaky in terms of graininess and for that reason he's a great bodybuilder as well not only an intense trainer but he definitely did train with crazy intensity and for that reason he makes number one in my list of top five most intense training bodybuilders in the world and that's gonna do it for this video guys hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure to like the video if you want to see more content like this subscribe to my channel all the best, guys. Bye-bye.